y'all know who you are and you know what you did. I am scared to open these because this one feels heavy-ish. It could be book, but it could be a DVD. Listen, now y'all have me trepidatious to open my own damn mail. Let's see what we have here. Oh, oh my God. Oh, yay. This is the tiniest little bag I've ever seen. This is so cute. They got me, oh my God, this is my favorite flavor. They got me the Welch's Berries and Cherries Fruit Snacks. This is so perfect because I was about to order more. This is my blood sugar snacks that I eat. And I usually have the assorted mix flavors, which is good. But the berries and cherries, mm, they hit different. Okay. I didn't even know they had one this tiny. Happy birthday, Katie. Enjoy your gift from Lawanda. Lawanda, you know what? Honestly, God bless you for not getting me a DVD. <gasps> oh, oh my God. Lawanda, thank you so much. These little IDs. So I, sorry, this is going to be like really trippy, but I put um, a little type one diabetes thing right there instead of wearing a medical bracelet and mine is tearing and I needed another one. Oh my God. Thank you so much, Lawanda. That is so sweet. This might be the day that I don't get an edition of signs. Happy birthday. Thought I'd add to the collection. Enjoy. Lawanda, I swear to God, girl, you were doing so good. You were like, oh my God, I got you this diabetic stuff. And then I got you a fucking copy of signs. Is it possible to love and hate people at the same time? Because if it is, it is y'all. Hey, what's up, hello? Welcome to, or welcome back to my channel. I am Katie Colson, and we are going to go on an exhilarating ride, okay? Because I have type 1 diabetes. Did you know that? Hello. Um, I talk about it quite a bit, I feel like. Not as much as I should or could, but I do talk about it a lot. And people have asked me to put more of it in my videos. Now, that being said, some people do get upset when I talk about my diabetes or show anything about it because they say that I'm like bombarding them with scary content and needles and such. Now, I'm going to show part of my diabetic stuff. Now, you're not really going to see any needles or anything, but if knowing that they're there bothers you, do you think it's fun for me? I'm just saying. But you probably maybe don't want to watch this. I don't know. But basically, what we're going to do in this video is I am going through getting a new insulin pump and we're going to jump right in because I go over that in the intro or in this next clip but we're going to be doing that and then we are also going to be reading the mistletoe motive and sweet blood sweet blood is by pete houtman and the mistletoe motive, motive is by chloe lease so presumably both of these have diabetic characters in them i know this one does because it says it in the summary this one i just heard that it does so we're gonna have a little diabetic reading vlog reading diabetic books and also going through a diabetic change of life and I'm so excited for it. So, okay, let's stop talking and let's get to vlogging. Hello. This is a never before done angle. I I don't know really what possessed me. Maybe it's just because it's close to the closet. Anyway, I got a notification that my Omnipod, this is so crazy to see, okay, that my Omnipod is available to be picked up at the pharmacy. Because I went there a couple days ago. I thought this was going to take months. Because when I tell you, when I got this, not only was it the price of my car, I'm not kidding you, $6,000. I mean, listen, you've saved my life many times. But $6,000. Okay, when I got this, it took months to go through insurance. And then I had to go to lessons. Like, I literally had to go to a Medtronic, like, facility that was far away and take classes on how to use it. And when I tell you that the Omnipod, I just called and they were like, oh yeah, girl, like what's your insurance? And I was like, I told them and they were like, okay, cool, we'll get back to you. And like two days later, they were like, okay, so like what pharmacy do you want us to send it to? What? <laughs> what are you talking about? So the only thing is that because I thought it was going to take so long, I have a lot of reservoirs and infusion sites and stuff for this still that I've already paid for and are very expensive. Um, so I don't know what I'm gonna do about that because I'm very excited about the Omnipod. So I want to start using it immediately, but that does feel like a waste of money. 
I'm not sure. I feel like I'm going to end up just using the Omnibond. Anyway, so it says that it's available to go pick up. So I'm going to go pick it up. So I'm going to change. Maybe I should tell you what this thing is. That probably. I really went into this with absolutely no precursor. Um, hello, my name is Katie Colson and I have type 1 diabetes and it sucks. It sucks. Like, I don't care how strong of a human being you are. You cannot look at me and tell me that your diabetes doesn't suck. It sucks. Now, like, it's not a life ender. It's not like a life ruiner, but it's not a good time. Okay, it's not a good time. But technology has come a very, very long way. God bless. So, um, this is basically a pancreas outside of my body because my pancreas does not produce insulin and uh, you need that to live because when you eat food or drink anything besides water basically or diet soda um it has things called carbohydrates in them and it's not just sugar like starch everything basically except for meat cheese and eggs has uh and water has carbohydrates in it and if you intake carbohydrates your body is supposed to produce insulin to break down those carbohydrates into energy which is what makes you mobile and awake alert able to use your brain and everything. Um, but mine does not produce insulin. So basically the carbohydrates just stack up and up and up until you go into a coma or die, you know, knock on wood. Where's some wood? Let me knock on it. Had to knock on the real wood, the dresser. Uh, but I need insulin to go into my body so that I can remain alive. Uh, it's basically like the way a doctor described it to me was like, it's gas for a car. Like your body is the car and the gas is what's in this. And this is what's making the car. He made it sound way better. Anyway, this is insulin and it goes in here. Okay. And then throughout the day, it slowly gives me a little bit of insulin, just like um, a normal human being would slowly get a little bit of insulin. And then whenever I eat um, or if my blood sugar is high, then I tell it what my blood sugar is and tell it how much, how many carbohydrates I'm eating. And then dose myself for that and it gives me extra insulin. This is the longest intro literally of all time, but the Omnipod is tubeless. So this is like, I don't know if you can see it. You probably can, but it's like a little, little tube that goes inside your body, my body to give me insulin. But the new one is like a little pod that, that just goes on you and you don't have to have tubes and I'm actually like it's summertime right now and every time I wear a dress I have to wear shorts under it or um something to keep my insulin pump on which is really annoying and it makes um the options for what you can wear not low but less all of that being said okay I'm gonna change so that we can go to the grocery store all right let's do it okay did I say grocery store before that's not what I meant. But technically, it is a Walmart pharmacy and Walmart itself is a grocery store. So I feel like, you know, I didn't win, but I didn't lose. Anyway, let's go. Hi, can I help you? Oh, hi. Um, I'm here to pick up a prescription for Katherine Colson. So that is not fake here in the drive-thru stuff. Okay, so come inside. Got it. Uh, no good. <laughs> it's okay. Okay. That's so funny. It's like a box. I don't know. See, the thing I'm worried about is that it's the starter box with the... What's it called? The... The... I don't know what I'm saying. The thingy. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. The thingy. It's got the thingy in it that you click, click to give yourself insulin. It's like, I don't remember what it's called. Listen, I'm new here. Okay. I'm new here. Um, but I'm worried that that's the only thing it is and that it's not the pods themselves. Because when I came a couple days ago, they said that they didn't have all the pods, that they were waiting for more of them because they only had some and I needed like a 30 day supply or something. I don't remember. Anyway, LOL. Um... So I'm kind of worried about that, but the box was too big and it wouldn't fit through the mail delivery thing. So I'm going inside and hopefully the next clip will be me with my new body. Ah! I love it. Look at that. Simplify life. That's what I'm hoping for. 
Uh, so I was right that they didn't have the pods and I think it's a 30 day supply of pods. They didn't have it. Um, I have to come back a couple days from now, but she said that there are a couple included in the starter kit. So I can't wait to open it. Cause like, I just know the packaging is going to be, I just know it's going to be mm, aesthetic. I just know it. I'm so excited. Literally like the pharmacists were like, <laughs> cause I was so happy. I was like, <laughs> okay, now I'm actually going to go check the mail, but I'm, uh, I'm freaking out. Jolene, let me in. I don't understand. Like, I can't begin to describe the absolute ordeal that I went through getting this and going through the process of being able to wear it. So to be able to pick this up at the pharmacy and with basically no problems other than I have to wait a couple days for the pods, it feels like a gag. It feels like a gag. Like, where is the prank? Where is Ashton Kutcher? I'm just... I'm a little confused. So I'm gonna open it. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna put it on right now. Am I? I'm not, no, I'm not. But I'm gonna open it and see what it looks like. Oh my God, there's like a sleeve. This is fancy. I'm very easily impressed if you couldn't tell. Let's open her up y'all. Oh, well, you know, probably shouldn't have done that. Oh my God. Wow, this is like a whole, ass iPhone. This is really big. I did not think this thing was going to be so big. That's upsetting. I want to use my phone to do it, but apparently only Androids, which is hilarious because I only got the iPhone because it, my, where is it? My Dexcom can go to the Apple watch, which it wasn't technically able to do that with Android. So that's hilarious. But I don't want to carry this around. This is big. Like, I don't want to carry this and an iPhone. But you know what? We got to do what we got to do. Oh, it comes with a little case. Oh, okay. That looks way cuter. That looks way cuter. Let me take off the... Oh, satisfying. Oh, yeah. It's looking way sleeker now. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Is it fully charged or does that just mean it's charging? I don't know. It's at 81%. You know, I'm not looking forward to having to charge this all the time. I'm just gonna be honest with y'all. I'm gonna be honest. Okay. Omnifod, Omnifod, Omnipod, RX only compatible with Dexcom G6. Is this a closed loop system? Does this go to my Dexcom? No. No, does it? That would be wild. That would be wild. Okay, let's see. Oh my gosh! Yee! Look at it! <laughs> look at that! Look at that! Oh my, oh, it all comes together. That is so wicked. Oh, and okay, I'm, yes, that is way smaller than I thought it was gonna be. Way smaller. That is sick. I mean, technically it is still like a unit, but it's smaller than I had per perceived, predicted. Feared? I don't know. Anyway, lol. What is this? Oh, they gave me little patches. Okay, good. That's awesome. I wonder if they're free like they are for Dexcom. Because that would be great. If Pod Pals. That's so cute. Anyway, um, I'm going to do that or do something and hit you back up with an update on what I figure out. I am going to start with the mistletoe motive. I know... That this is Christmas, but like one, this cover is absolutely stunning. Two, I've heard, I think it's him that has diabetes. One of the main characters has type one diabetes. And I've heard that this is like one of the cutest romances of all time. This is by Chloe Lise. So, wait, oh, is that, wait, what? The Hating Game and You've Got Mail. Hmm. Those are uh, big shoes to fill. So I am going to start this and I'll let you know what I'm thinking when I'm like, I don't know, a couple chapters in? Obviously, time has passed. Obviously. But in that time, I have read two chapters of The Mistletoe Motive. I'm on page 30. And I am so shocked to be telling you that I'm loving it. 
I'm loving it. It's a romance. It's like, I guess it's like a cozy romance and I famously do not like anything cozy, but that's not the vibes I'm getting off of this. I'm not getting like, oh my God, oh, so cute. I'm like, this is so much fun. I really like it. So what it is, is we're following two characters. There's Gabriella and I keep calling him Frost. What is his first name? I'm forgetting. I just think of him as Frost. Okay, Jonathan. Yeah, Frost is way better, which is so fun. I love that his last name was Frost. Like, <laughs> so cute. Okay, so Gabriella is an autistic main character who is also demisexual and bisexual. And I'm like, what? That's amazing. And the representation so far is really good. And she's very cheerful. She loves Christmas so much. And she works at a bookstore. Now, the bookstore, obviously, because traditionally bookstore traditional booksellers are going out of business and are not doing as well because of places like Amazon you know I know I know I know um and she is worried that they're not going to have enough money the the booksellers or bookshop owners are not going to have enough money to keep her and the other manager Frost who is very analytical logical stoic like he's this big giant guy like you know what i'm talking we all know it's a romance book we all know okay and she is more of a petite girl and like it's not overly done like it's not like ali hazelwood like oh my god he's like a like his arms like a tree trunk like it's not like that like i like it the way they're done in this and they are both kind of worried that they're going to be unemployed. So it's workplace enemies lovers. So I'm definitely getting the, the hating game vibes for sure. But it's so cute. I am loving it. I'm loving it. Like, I, it's so cute. I'm just, like, I am obsessed. So, so far, I'm only 30 pages in, but there are no diabetic characters. So part of me is thinking maybe it's going to be a side character. I don't know. I hope it's one of the main characters, but I'll take what I can get. I'll take whatever representation I can get because honestly, I don't get much. I don't get much. But um, I did not set up uh, any training for my Omnipod yet. I am going to do that. But right now, I'm just going to keep reading this because, again, like nobody's more shocked than me to be telling you that I'm eating it up. Good Lord, that took forever. That took so long. What time is it now? It's 8.30 PM. It took hours. You can literally see, it was sunny outside. I wanna say I started this at like 6 PM. Two and a half hours, good God. Um, It was sunny, then it started raining, then it cleared up, then it got dark. Yikity. So yeah, I completed the course and I think, so what I'm going to do tomorrow, because it says I have to contact my healthcare provider. So I'm going to contact my doctor tomorrow um, and see if I need to like set up an appointment with him. Hopefully I can do it virtually and then I can start using it. I was so funny when I thought I was going to start using this today. I was hilarious. But I thought that because we're doing a diabetic video, I would show you... Um, putting on a new site for my insulin pump because the one that I have on now, uh, look alive, we're unzipping my pants, sorry. Yeah, we're getting a little, we're gonna get a little TMI, but like it's medical, like this is not for hot content. Like what am I talking about? This is not a thirst trap, okay? I just rip them off. Like I don't use Unisolve. Okay, so I just take off the adhesive. I do this in public all the time. So like, I'm sorry if me literally doing this is so weird to you, but I do it all the time. Okay, let's see, I'll just do it right here. Now on the back of my hips or buttocks, it doesn't work as well. Like the infusion signs aren't as good, but you gotta change it up, you know? Okay, so if you can see that, now what I'm gonna do is attach this. put my freaking pants back on and then it should be ready to go. Yep. Dun, da, da, da. Okay. So that was how I put on the Medtronic 6MEG inserter, whatever. 
Um, so that's cool. And now, oh my God, look at this. Now I can actually get back to reading. I got to chapter eight and again, loving it, loving it. Um, there's no diabetic character, but I am thinking that I know who it is because it would be pretty clear to someone who knows, you know, <laughs> coming from a diabetic. And I can't wait for, I, I don't want to say anything. I don't want to say anything. I really can't wait for that moment. And I want to see it. I'm like almost halfway through the book and it still hasn't happened. But I know it will and I know it's going to be good. I hope it, well, no, I hope it's going to be good. Anyway, okay, I'm going to keep reading because I swear it's like 10 something at night, but I am going to finish this today. Also, I wanted to show you that I put those supplies in here, except for three of these and uh, five of these, or no, wait, five of these and three of these um, to keep out for the transition period between Omnipod. But I strategically got everything to fit in here. And this will go uh, right there with other stuff, but I'm currently going through it to see if I need all of it. But look at that, it fits perfectly. I just got to the diabetic content, just got to the diabetic content and it was amazing. I mean, I know I'm not at the end, there's gonna be more. And yeah, you do have to wait until page 119, but I'm gonna read it to you. Okay, it's, it's, it's just a little bit, just a little bit. Okay, and we're here to talk about the diabetes. So, um, I guess this is mild spoilers for the, this is mild spoilers because I am going to be reading a scene that happens between them, but it isn't, it's mild spoilers, okay? Cause I'm reading a part of the book, but it's a romance. Like I'm sure you can assume where it's going. Okay, so she confesses something to him to be more vulnerable and to make him like understand her a little bit better. And he's like, oh, can I share something with you? I have type one diabetes. It's well managed, but it still impacts me. It's impacted us. Sometimes when I've been grumpy, when I've abruptly ended conversations and stalked off, it's been because I didn't feel well or my alerts were warning me I was too high or low. Yeah, same. Because I needed to check my blood sugar or have a quick snack or catch my breath and wait for the insulin adjustment to kick in. And then she's like thinking about times where she's like, oh my God, that's what you were doing? Like thinking back on all these times. And She's like, oh, your phone, you track it somehow. And this, I'm like, oh my God, this author did the work. Y'all did the work. That's right. I have an app that's connected to my CGM. My continuous glucose monitor, shut up. Whew. But I check my blood sugar with finger pricks using a glucometer too, which I have. Y'all have seen me do that. My CGM isn't foolproof. Like literally the work, like does Chloe at least have diabetes? Because I'm confused. Um, is it foolproof? And I don't like relying only on that. So last night, for instance, I checked with the glucometer right before I left the locker room after my game and I was a little low. When I knew I was driving you, I wanted to be sure I was up enough and safe behind the wheel. So I checked again in the car using the app and my CGM and I was still lower than I wanted. Thus, the peanut butter cups. Oh my God, he has candy in his car. He has a little stash of candy in his car for his blood sugar. So do I. Well, I have gummies and granola bars, but same, same. And then this was really sweet. I was like, wow, like way to make diabetes like a romance moment. Like, oh my God, is that she's like, I know I don't get it in the sense that I don't have diabetes too, which I'm really glad that the author opened this with that statement. But maybe I understand it a little. Living with something persistent and beyond your control. You can't take it off or walk away from it or lay it down for a while. And even when you've become accustomed to its reality, when it's not really bad or good, it just is. Sometimes it's hard when you're with others, when you feel that sense of difference and distance from them as you deal with the part of yourself that they don't understand, that you have to think about in social situations and in your daily life in ways that they don't. Oh my God! Oh my God. That's so good. That's so good. Like, oh my God, I fucking love it. Literally, it's from here, like, that, it's just that. 
and it's already like A plus diabetic representation. I'm obsessed. don't know why I was so sure without checking any factual evidence not a single research did I do but I was so sure that I was going to be able to start the Omnipod like without doing any of this training and stuff which as it turns out very obviously is not true so I think I told you last time yesterday that I was gonna look into when I could get the training done and the soonest that I can do is June 19th at 2 p.m. And I don't know if I have to go to multiple rounds because I did for Medtronic. Hopefully I don't for this. Hopefully it's only one, which I'm pretty sure it is. Um, but I have to go to that. And today is June 13th. So I'm going to have to wait a week, which is frustrating. But honestly, like, it's not a big deal. Like, I have so many supplies left for Medtronic. So it's really not a problem. And what I've been doing right now, I'm on reading sprints. And I am reading slash editing slash playing games. Um, but I'm reading Sweet Blood by Pete Houtman. The only times I've read it is when my blood sugar is high for some reason, or like a, a, li a little high, and I need to walk on my walking pad to bring my blood sugar down, which works very well, by the way. Like if you're a diabetic, get a walking pad. It works. I'm telling you, it works. Like it works too well sometimes, to be honest. But I'm currently, um, I'm on chapter 12. I'm on page 64. And I love this book. I am eating. I'm feasting. This is so good. But here's the thing. Okay, caveat. Listen to me. Listen to me. Look at, look at me right here. You're not going to like this book. You're not going to like this book. Like the likelihood that somebody watching this is going to like this book. Pretty slim. Pretty slim. Because I feel like you have to be these two things to like this book. You have to be a type 1 diabetic. And you have to have been a goth at some point in your life for an extended period of time. Then you're going to love this. Me to a T. This is the most me. I, this is literally like I'm reading fan fiction about my own high school self. Lucy, the main character, she is Katie in high school. Like if you ever want to know what I was like, I was like that except very energetic and optimistic where this character has all of my same thoughts but keeps her mouth shut. Something I've never done. But this is basically, this is about this girl. Oh my God, I'm obsessed. Okay, this is about this girl, Lucinda or Lucy. And she is a type 1 diabetic. And the reason I say you have to be a diabetic to enjoy this is that the entire book is about diabetes. Like, yeah, there is like a vampire element. There is like a high school element. There is like a boy element, but really it's centralized around diabetes. And I love that because this is like really good representation. And yeah, it's so heavy on the representation that the only way you're going to like it it's like loveless. Like if you're not asexual or aromantic, you're going to give it three stars because the book is fine, but the representation, stunning. So the type one representation in this book, if you were a diabetic, please read this. Please. Like it's insane. But okay. She has diabetes and basically her conspiracy, which this author is talking me into, like I'm fully tinfoil hat, believe this, is that she says that diabetics are actually vampires and that insulin is a vampire vaccine because in the ye old days, um, the things that people thought were vampires could very easily have been explained by um, uh, hyperglycemic episodes or hypo. I always get that confused, but basically like ketoacidosis, um, high blood sugars. And the way that she describes it, I was like, oh my God. That could be true. Like, not that they're vampires, but that they are what ye olden days depicted as a vampire. And I'm like, oh my God, this is, this is brilliant. This is brilliant. I'm obsessed. And she is in high school. She's 16. And she's on this Transylvania website, which is basically like a chat room um, for vampires. And it's like a couple different people that say that they don't like really say that they're vampires. They just talk a lot about vampires, but there's one guy named Draco. Is this play about us? Like, I'm confused. His name is Draco. He says he is a vampire, okay? But then she meets this boy in school. She finds him very intriguing, okay? Okay, for the diabetics out there, one, I have been 
underlining and writing this book to shit. And I know in the last book I said, oh, like, I wasn't sure if I wanted to write in it because I wasn't sure if I was going to want to keep it. This one, oh, it's going on the shelf, baby. It's going on the damn shelf. I'm only on page 64, but it's getting kept. And every time something happens, she'll think about how it impacts her diabetes or how what's happening with her diabetes will impact her life in the long run, which is very scary. But this is one where all I just wrote was like nailed it. And it says, the thing about non-diabetics is that no matter how many times you explain the whole blood glucose, insulin, food thing to them, they just don't get it. First off, they think that because it comes down to the numbers and equations, you ought to be able to control it. Well, I can control it the same way you can control how many potato chips you eat or your temper or a six month old puppy. Sometimes there's just nothing you can do. I'm, I'm going to print that out. I'm going to, I'm going to type that. I'm going to print it out. I'm going to frame it. And then every time somebody says something, I'm just going to point at it. Like, you don't know what you're talking about. Oh my God. I'm just, oh my God. I love this. Before eating, I check my blood sugar like a good little diabetic. 234, too high, bad girl, bad, bad, evil, wicked girl. Sugar-coated blood cells are destroying my body from within. Kidney failure, blindness, neuropathy, horrors. Like, that's what I mean when I say you have to be a diabetic to love this because, like, I, I need to go look up if Pete Hellman is diabetic because if he's not, how did he read my journal? I'm confused. Anyway, sorry. Um, obviously, this vlog is going to extend over a long period of time because... I can't get my Omnipod until June 19th. I can't put it on, um, but I do want to take you through that process. Um, so either this is gonna be a super long video or there's gonna be a part two. I don't know, but anyway, okay. I'm gonna get back to reading and editing and sprinting and I will hit you back up later. Okay, y'all, it is past midnight. It's sometime in the midnight hour and I just finished this book. I just finished it and there is a moment where like they're having sexy times and he has to unplug his insulin pump because he has the same insulin pump as me oh my gosh. Jonathan Frost hello and that was hot that was hot that was pretty good um okay so this is what I'll say I am very surprised at how much I ended up enjoying this especially with how little diabetic content there is I thought it was gonna be much more prevalent but I feel like Hannah from Hannah's Recent Reads told me that. Like, she was like, oh, yeah, it's more about autistic rep, but there is diabetic rep. And I was like, okay, cool. I'll still read it no matter what because, you know, we get so little representation. This was damn good. And I feel like now I need to go back and annotate it. <sighs> Do I? I kind of feel like I have to keep it because it has diabetic representation. So, like, I have to keep the book because... It's diabetic representation. Like, do you know what I'm saying? I got a notification on Instagram saying like, hey, um, I thought that you might want to know that Allie Hazelwood's new book, Love Theoret Theoretically, has a diabetic main character. And I was like, what are the odds? That's wild. So that is a book I'm also going to read for this video because I realized that I only have two short books and I finished this in a day which is amazing for me. Like, yeah, is it small, but I'm not a fast reader because I have, you know, rampant ADHD. But uh, I'm gonna get the audiobook for Love Theoretically because it said when I looked it up that it was like a 14 hour audiobook. And I was like, damn, I thought Allie Hazelwood wrote, Allie Hazelwood wrote like novellas and stuff, but this is a full length novel. So I'm going to listen to the audiobook for that. And then I'm gonna physically read Sweet Blood, which is so funny because when I was going online and looking up like, oh, um, books with diabetic representation, every single list, it was like all nonfiction and then sweet blood. Which is hilarious to me because I don't think that sweet blood is like a well-known book at all. And I don't think that it's like, I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be like a fan fiction or something. So that's hilarious to me. That's how slim our pickings are. I'm telling you. Okay. I need to go take my makeup off because I've had it on for so long and I always get worried that it's like, you know, effing up my skin, but it looks so good. And I was like, I don't want to take my makeup off because every time I go in there to take it off, I look at myself in the mirror and I'm like, oh, never mind, you can stay. Oh, okay, let's go to sleep and I will hit you back up tomorrow with if I got a hold of my endocrinologist. All right, good night.
Hi, <laughs> it is many a day later. A couple things to say. One, I have to leave very shortly because I am in the parking lot of the Atlanta Diabetes Association and I am going in for my pod training. Very excited, um, nervous about it, you know, but like excited. Like more, less nervous than I was when I got the Medtronic. Like it cannot be worse than that. It can't. Literally that first couple days, like the first like two weeks, honestly, of having the Medtronic for the first time was one of the lowest points of my entire life. Like that is the only time I have ever been, I don't want to say it out, I don't want to say that out loud, but like genuinely, like I remember lay, like sitting on the bathroom floor, talking to my friend being like, if this is the best that life can offer, I don't want to live like that. It was just terrible. And of course... We rebounded. We came back alive. You know what I'm saying? Like we 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 are winning now. Um, and I'm assuming that I'll be even more winning with the Omnipod. So I'm about to go do that. But I have a little sad news. I would have finished Sweet Blood by now because I'm loving it. But I can't find it. I can't find it. I didn't lose it because that sounds definitive. I did not lose it. I just misplaced it. I think, I think I left it at my job and it's a thin book. Like, I don't know where it is. I'm sure. Listen, when I go back there in a couple days or I'm, I don't go today or tomorrow, but when I go back on Wednesday, I will be searching high and low and I will find it. Have I not, have I been able to find it in the last couple of days? No, but I will find it. I will find it. Will it get read in this video? I have no freaking idea because even if I can't find it, I'm going to buy it because I'm literally eating it up. It's so good. Anyway, I did start the audiobook of Love Theoretically by Allie Hazelwood. Um, I love Elsie. She does something with science. I literally barely pay attention to those parts because I know I'm not going to understand it anyway. Um, and she's broke as shit. So she is working another job um, where she does fake dating. And I, in the way that Allie Hazelwood describes it, it's like, that's a real thing. Like this, It's like when people hire people to go to weddings with them as their plus one. So she does like dates for people and there's a strict rule that you can only go on one date uh, with a person, but she breaks that rule for this guy named Greg because she feels bad for him. And she's like, I would be this guy's best friend if like if this wasn't a contractual money situation. Um, but his brother, Jack, the broody Jack, who is Greg's best friend, which is really cute. I like that. Um, there's a lot of sexual tension between Elsie and him, but Elsie doesn't let any of her personal information get out when she's on these dates. So she doesn't want anybody to know that she has diabetes because it's too specific and it doesn't allow her to blend into the background. And there was a moment where she has a high blood sugar that's so bad and she's trying to find her phone at this pool party to take her insulin to bolus. And she is like kind of stumbling around and he has to help her and the way that it's just, I was like, oh my God, that was so fucking cute. That was so cute. I love it. Okay. So listen, it's Ali Hazelwood. So like, you know, there are some things that I'm like, Ooh, but then there's a lot of things that I'm like, Ooh. okay, I'm about to be late. So I'm going to go for this training. I doubt I'll be able to film anything, but I will hit you back up immediately after I'm done. Okay. So the syringe and needle cap in there, we'll take both of them out and twist them together to build the full syringe. Like this one? Yep. Yeah. Perfect. If it's below the minimum fill, does it just tell you to just keep putting more in? Correct, yeah. It won't fully activate it. Okay, so on the pod, there's an arrow pointing to the fill port. Okay. I'll stick the needle in there. And then push all the insulin into the pod. Perfect. So the two beeps means that it's been activated and okay. it's hit minimum fill. The controller and the pot are looking for each other. Once it finds it, the screen will change and it will say priming. Where are you wearing your Dexcom? Right here. Okay, so we could do like stomach on that side, 
lower back, upper bottom on that side, okay. your thigh. But I probably wouldn't do like back of the arm, this arm, and this thigh. You, it but seems, ooh, gosh. Ooh. <laughs> wow, exciting. Um, That's not good. Ooh, slide out there. Oh, see, like, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, wow. Exciting. I've never, I've never put my pot on my thigh. I didn't even know that was yeah, you a do that. thing. Is it, is it like, uh, so whenever I was doing, um, injections only, they would tell me that like, oh, if you do the thigh or the back that it takes longer for Correct. and Correct. stuff like that. So I'm assuming that's still true. It is still true. But I think when you're on a pump, I think it's fine. I think yeah. it's fine. You may just find that you have to pre-bolus a little bit sooner Yeah. for the mealtime bolus, but it, it should work perfect if you okay. want to go there. Okay. Um, okay, so where do you think you want to wear it today? Maybe you can try no wrong answer. Well, I would say the thigh, but it might be a little awkward. <laughs> we could definitely close the door. Um, uh, just because I've, I've never done it before, and I'm like, well, if I'm going to try it, I might yeah, as well try it, it. What if I, like, with a professional. Perfect. Look at that. And then, it's not going to stick you yet. It's just like putting on a sticker. You're going to lay it where you want it to go on the thigh. Okay. I probably would do... It's okay. It's just saying, you haven't fully activated me yet. Okay, so because you are lean, um, in a second we're getting ready to tell it to auto insert the cannula. Yeah. If you want to pinch up right around where the cannula is going to go in. Okay. Sometimes it makes it a little bit better. Yeah. Um, wow. Pretty nifty. Perfect. Yeah, that was cool. Nice. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. There we go. Perfect. <laughs> Look at that. Now we're in business. And that's it. Nice. That's awesome. Yay. I'm excited for you. I am so fucking happy. Bro, I know that that angle was terrible because I was like, didn't want her to feel awkward, but that was amazing. <laughs> like this is where my pot is. You can't, you can barely tell. That's insane. I'm sorry, this angle's literally horrific as they all are, but look at that. Isn't that crazy? I can actually wear a dress now. <laughs> I'm so excited. Hi. It is many hours later. Well, not many. I guess it's 7.30. Um, as we could have predicted, and as I'm pretty sure earlier in this vlog, I did predict, my blood sugar is like not ideal. Not as bad as it was when I got the Medtronic because, oh my God, that was scary. Scary. Um, okay, let me show you. So it just kept going up and up and up like little by little. And I was like, okay, is it not working? Like, well, I guess I can show you now um, what it looks like, if you can even see that. Um, which I've never had it on my leg before, which probably wasn't the right idea to put it on my leg since I've never done it before. But like, listen, I was like, you're a medical professional. Let me just <laughs> do it in front of you. So it's on my leg and it just kept going like up and up and up. Um, you probably don't even know what this means, but so it was up to like 196 and it was just kind of staying there and i was taking insulin taking insulin taking insulin and all i had was steak which has no carbs in it and feta cheese which has no carbs in it so i don't understand what made it act like this so it was at 120 uh, 196 and now it is at 176 so we're hoping for the best um I do have like quite a bit of onboard insulin. So it might crash. I don't know what it's going to do. I, I kind of hope it does crash because then at least I know that the insulin is working. And I do have um, Dunkin' Donuts coffee, like half of one in the refrigerator that I could drink. But I did listen to more of Love Theoretically. Not much. I think I'm at like 17% or something. But again, I am enjoying it. I don't get it. Like... Okay, it's like this girl that's in this program where she wants to get accepted into, I think it's like MIT. Is it MIT? I think it is. Anyway, um, but it's either her who is a theorist or a physicist. And 
the theorists and the physicists are like battling, you know, it's like Survivor. And <laughs> I don't understand how this dude Jack, they're going to have to explain this to me because she made it sound like he was her like nemesis and she didn't realize it was Jack, but like that he was her nemesis and that he was a grown man when she was in middle school. And I'm like, Elsie, I'm gonna need you to roll that back and give us the facts because that's disgusting. But there, he clearly wasn't. Like, I don't get how he wrote this paper if he was in middle school. Like, even if he was in high school. I'm confused. Anyway, I don't know what I'm gonna do um, other than try to maintain my blood sugar. Like, I don't want to give myself physical insulin because I want to try and trust the Omnipod, but trust is really hard, you know? Like, I wanna be in charge. My blood sugar being high for a prolonged amount of time is making me like so tired and my head hurts. Like I took Advil, but my head hurts and I'm like, just like my eyes are just like keep closing and I'm like, oh my God, Katie, it's the middle of the day. Well, it's 7.30. Anyway, okay, let's get back to doing something. Guys, guys, I've got several things to say, but the main one I want to say real quick, it's literally every time. It's literally every time I turn on the camera. Conspiracy TikTok, make this make sense to me. Anyway, we're gonna talk through it. All right, background noise be damned. I wanna tell you that I'm about like 58, something like that percent of the way through Love Theoretically by Ali Hazelwood. Good soup, good mother soup, good soup. I am obsessed, I'm obsessed. Now I'm gonna tell you, this book talks a lot about diabetes. It gets brought up quite a bit. And I feel like the lay person, the people that do not share in my diabetic struggles, might find that frustrating or annoying or repetitive, like, because she does bring it up a lot. She thinks about it a lot, not brings it up a lot, but that's realistic. And the amount of times that she thinks about it is not even a quarter of the amount of times that she's actually thinking about it. like. But it'll just be like, oh, um, maybe she starts sweating or her head hurts or she's thirsty. And like the first thing she'll think is like, oh, what's my blood sugar? And like somebody reading that not understanding the way that diabetes affects people's lives might be like, oh my God, we get it. She has diabetes. But like, no, trust me. Like, it's so realistic. And let me tell you something. This man, Jack. This man, Jack. What a man, what a man. What a mighty good man. Oh my God. He, they're at a party. And she, he like... Um, has a bag of almonds, like this, like, you know, treat size, just a little bag of almonds. And he's like, here you go, you know, if you're hungry or whatever, and kind of plays it off. And then when she thanks the host of the party, like, oh, thanks for like, uh, sorry for eating your almonds. She's like, I don't have almonds in this house. I don't have any nuts in this house. It wasn't mine. And Elsie's like, oh my God, he researched low glycemic, like blood sugar friendly snacks for me to eat went out and bought them and is carrying them in his pocket. Um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, what? I'm sorry. Mothers, raise your boys right. That, stunning. Stunning, I'm obsessed. Okay, also I wanted to tell you that uh, yesterday I took a shower, um, my first day, with the pod and the two big things that I was like, oh my God, I didn't realize how exciting this was going to be is one, I can wear dresses now. And what I mean by that is I can wear form fitting dresses. I can wear form fitting, um, like leggings. I can wear dresses without having to make sure that they are long enough to be able to wear, um, not cargo shorts, but like Capris? What am I talking about? Shorts that are long enough to carry my insulin pump under them. Anyway, LOL. Um, I can do that now and I can also take a shower and not have to remember to bring in the little plug to stop up the tube that's in my body. Crazy. It was freaking wild. It was, it was so exciting. I, listen, I can't tell you. And then, um, so I think I told you yesterday, I'm not totally sure, but that I was having like a bit of a struggle with, um, maintaining or figuring out my blood sugar because I did take what I felt, well, no, what I know is a lot more insulin for food than I normally take. And, you know, I don't know what's happening with that, but today I woke up, blood sugar 134? Well, actually I woke up and it was 127. And then 
as it does, which is so stupid. I don't understand this, but as it does, it was 127. And then the second I woke up, didn't get out of bed, was just scrolling on TikTok. Um, it went up to 151. I don't understand that. But then it came back down again and I'm drinking coffee and I gave myself way more insulin than I usually do for coffee comparatively. And it seems like it's doing okay. Like when I tell you the entire, in range, 12 p.m. See, this is where it doesn't make sense to me. It looks like, well, no, it does make sense. It looks like what happened was that while I was sleeping, so at this, it only shows you through three hours, but I don't know if you can even see this, but at 10 a.m. it was like pretty good. And then it went up and was like almost like 200, which is not great, obviously. Um, but then the Omnipod figured that, could you see that? Did it just go? Anyway, uh, that Omnipod figured it out y'all and it brought it back. Look at God, look at medical science. We are living in a good Lord year. A good Lord? We're living in a good year of our Lord, is what I meant to say. Okay, I feel like there was something else I was gonna tell you and I don't remember what it was. Oh, oh, I wanna show you that I reorganized again. I know, um, I reorganized again the, let's not pay attention to how messy my desk is. And let's also lie to ourselves and say that it's not always like this. Uh, but I reorganized inside the drawers because those are always crisp and organized. The top of the desk, never. But um, I reorganized because I realized that I actually cleared out an entire drawer from switching to this pod. An entire drawer was empty. Amazing. Okay, let me show you. And then this, again, like clear back there. Before it was packed to the brim. So we just have my old pod and... Um, a new pricker and um, glucose monitor for, or blood sugar tester uh, for if I need an extra one, which does happen sometimes. The other one stops working or I lose it. Extra lancets. I do not change these that often. I'm not going to lie to you. It's really bad. I really don't change them a lot. I have um, two transmitters for when they expire. And then this is where I have like my Dexcom adhesives. And this is just like KT tape. And then, um, why do I have this? Oh, this is when, um, so when my Dexcom starts to fall, fall off at work, I wrapped it with this and then I kept it for some reason. I don't know. It looks like it could be useful. And then Omnipod, um, adhesive overlays, which I'm, I put them here because I'm hoping to get a lot more of them. And then obviously syringes, skin tack. If you have any medical thing that needs to go into your body, go on Amazon and buy this. It's cheap. It works. It is amazing. 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 And then to go skin tack, blood sugar test strips. Um, excuse you. Well, actually, you know what? That's probably better. Okay. And then in this one, again, uh, uh, the bare space, the blank space. What are we doing? Okay. Um, I've got a bunch of Omnipods and then my Dexcoms. I never get very many in an order, but so I will never have to take more space than this. Perfect. Isn't that stunning? Like I am literally blown away. I'm blown away. This has been the longest update of all time. Okay. I'm gonna get back to reading and hopefully I'll hit you back up when I'm done with the book. Hi. Look at this cute little backdrop. Oh my God, she's a moment. She's a moment. The reason it's a certified dum-dum is because you remember how I was vlogging that book, Sweet Blood, for this video? I don't know where it is. I don't know where it is. I took it to work and I didn't work yesterday or today. So I'm going to check when I go in tomorrow. But yeah, I did. I must have left it at work. Though, there's no way people wouldn't know it was my book. Like, it's about vampires, it's a book, and it's about diabetes. Like, duh. Oh, what is he going to get? I just got, um, I haven't showed y'all. Okay, I just got my new insulin pump. And when I tell you, I damn near almost cried. I damn near almost cried. I was so happy, like so happy because yes, I am having like, um, I am struggling with the newness of it and the differences. Um, but not even close to the struggle that I had with the, um, with the Medtronic. 
And okay, so the only thing that I don't like is that I have to use this PDM, uh, which is a cell phone that doesn't have cell phone capabilities. Um, so it's like, I keep doing that. It's like a cell phone. It says Katie's pancreas, just in case anybody was confused. Um, the thing, the only thing that's frustrating is that because I want to be able to use my phone, but you can't use it on iOS. It's like that. That thing ready. It's a little bionic pancreas attached to my body by adhesive. Yeah. So it's just, I don't know. It's freaking crazy. It's crazy. It's so cool. Like, I love it. Oh my gosh. Hi. Um, we have a couple things to talk about. One, the most exciting. I found my book. I found my book. My boss was like, there's not a single other human being that would be reading this. So I knew it had to be yours. Duh. So I am on chapter 15, going to hopefully be reading more of that today. I picked up The Girls Are Never Gone because I was also told by Gabby that this has diabetic representation. I've read four chapters, so I'm on literally on exactly page 50. <laughs> Way to go, me. Um, I love the cover. I can go ahead and tell you, I'm not going to care. Not going to care. I've read 50 pages and it's like, it's okay. It's not bad. It's not good. Is the representation good? Yes. In like an angsty teen kind of way that like I don't really care for, but it's being talked about. There are things that are being talked about and I enjoy that, but like the book is not very good. Only four chapters in though, so what am I supposed to say? But um, I need to put on a new one, so I figured I would do that with you because I don't know if I necessarily remember everything I'm supposed to do. So you might watch me fail and that's okay. Deactivate your pod. To change your pod, you must first deactivate the current pod. Deactivating your pod will stop insulin delivery. Deactivate pod. Okay, I'm gonna take off the old one. This part, I do remember. I do remember, do I? Yes. They had to do minimum 100, that's just, that's BS, like, I don't need that much. That's just such a waste of insulin. Did I get it? All the boobles? It's much harder to press this than I thought. Oh my god. You know what? I'm probably just really weak. That's what it is. Ah, oh, yay, it was enough. It's connecting with pod. How does it know that it's this one? I don't know. Medical science. It's not... Oh no, it's working! Yay! Okay. Also, can I tell you that I never imagined to have this many diabetic books, like, in the world, honestly. Well, while that's happening, I'm gonna refill my low blood sugar gummy pack. I like to do this, um, have them in a plastic bag instead of just keeping them in here because the amount of times that, am I even in frame? I'm sorry, I'm a mess. Yay, it's ready, okay. Um, the amount of times that I need the entire pack is rare and I don't like them getting all hard and stale or having to throw them away, so we just do that. This time, because I had it on my leg the last time and I was having problems um, with my blood sugar being high and me taking more insulin than I felt like I needed um, and it not really coming down very, like quickly at all, I think it was because it was on my leg. So as a um, black and white comparison, I'm gonna put this one on my abdomen. So, because that's a very quick insulin, um, Delivery, like it, it, it works faster that way. Okay. Now, of course, I forgot alcohol wipes, and this is not the same. So don't tell people that I did this because I'm not a medical professional. I'm just going to wipe it off and say that's good enough because I am the master of my own fate. <laughs> okay. Put it on something that's at least a little fatty. You know what? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. We're committing. It's on there now. Hope you can see it. Okay. And she said to pinch it up. Is pod securely in place? Yes.
that scared the out of me. Oh my god. It's not that it hurt. It was just like a boop. But I don't know. It's just like it came out of nowhere. That was crazy. Connecting transmitter. This could take up to 20 minutes. Okay, I don't have 20 minutes because I was supposed to leave for work like 10 minutes ago. So we're just gonna take it with us and we are gonna hope for the best. And I brought another one with me, obviously. I don't know if I have enough insulin. Yeah, I do. Okay. Um, we will hope for the best. And yes, I will hit you back up at a later date. Oh my God, hi. It is a very long time later. Like a very long time. It's literally been like two weeks, easily, since the last time I talked to you. Do I remember what the last thing I said was for you just a second ago in this vlog? No, I do not recall. I don't even remember if I wrapped up Love Theoretically and also now I have the book. Um, so I'm just gonna do kind of a review on everything right now as like a chaotic review slash outro. So Love Theoretically, I gave it four stars. I really like it. Like five stars for diabetic content, but you know, it's a romance. Um, I do want to go back through and annotate the diabetic things that I really liked about it, but I'm going to give it four stars. I thought it was cute. Um, in reality, it's more of a three star because I'm not going to think about this again. Like I won't like talk about this book with people. I'll just be like, oh my God, yeah, that is diabetic representation. And that's it. But I did enjoy. And also this character has an Omnipod, which is what I got in this vlog. So that's very exciting. And speaking of Omnipod, it's going very well. It's going very well. Like, I'm very happy with it. Um, so yes, four stars. I enjoyed this. I have seen other people not like it as much, but they don't have diabetes. So anyway, and then I'll tell you, we already talked about this, but Mistletoe Motive, there's only diabetic representation in the very end. And while this book is like cute, you know, um, it's okay. I'm gonna give it three stars. Like, I don't know. I just found it very unbelievable that he could hide his diabetes from her when they work. They're the only two employees and they work side by side and are like obsessed with each other. The math is not mathing, my man. And then I'm gonna tell you real quick that I DNF'd this. The girls are never gone. This book is so boring and just cringy YA, like really immature YA. And yeah, the main character has diabetes, but when I tell you I thought it was annoying, I thought it was annoying. Like, also, I don't understand this cover because this cover is like, also it's 4th of July. So apologies for that. My neighborhood is obsessed with fireworks. Wow. We're just going to keep going. I'm so sorry for that noise. Anyway, um, this cover is giving horror. Okay. But the main character is giving, I'm 11 years old. So did not like that. DNF'd it. Never going to continue. I ate this up. I love this book. Oh my God. Now here's the thing. I'm not recommending it unless you have diabetes. If you have diabetes, read this, read this, read it so good. If you don't have diabetes, you're not going to like this. You're going to think it's annoying because I would think it was annoying if I didn't have type one diabetes, because this is not only fantastic representation, like it cannot be done better. In my opinion, this could not have been done better. I absolutely loved it. Um, but the entire thing is about diabetes. It's not like, oh, yeah, every once in a while I bring it up. Like, no, that's what the entire book is about, okay? And I know it's not super long, but, like, if you don't have diabetes, you're just gonna be like, okay, we get it. Like, she has diabetes. But, like, no, if you have it, you're gonna be like, oh my god, yes, Lucy! But I'm giving this five stars. I'm, I'm gonna talk about this book. I, I, I'm gonna, I've already brought up the vampire conspiracy so many times with people. I freaking loved it. And then these are the tabs. I'll tell you that um, red was for diabetic rage. Like, when people would say things like, I thought like, um, oh, you, you can't come to the Halloween party then. And she's like, what? Because I can't have candy or, um, uh, your diabetes, you're clearly not in control of your diabetes, bitch. Who asked you for starters, stuff like that. And then I have teal for great rep or just like the reality of type one diabetes, uh, blue for sad or reality sucks. Um, like whenever she would think like she would worry about going blind. I'm like, and then uh, orange is for things that I just found really relatable. And then pur purple is just, I love Lucy so much. Like, she's so amazing. I love it. And the vampireness of it was, like, really well done, where it wasn't like, oh, my God, like, I'm obsessed with vampires. It was like, this is what I do to make diabetes make sense to me and make it not as terrible. And I was like, that is really cool. And I really like that Lucy 
if you, again, if you have diabetes, then you'll love this because she is such a realistic character. Like it's, it's not somebody who is completely in control because it, you can't be in control of your diabetes all the time. And there were moments that I was like, wow, that's so sad. And like, we've all been there where she looks, she thinks like, oh, I, I'm supposed to check my blood sugar. And she'll look over and see the monitor. And she's like, I don't want to know. And we'll just walk away. And it's like, she's risking a lot by doing that. And she pays the price for it many times, but I can totally understand that. And there's one time where she like picks up her blood sugar monitor and she's like, this is like the most um, cold and clinical machine. It just gives me a solid number. It doesn't say, oh, you know, you're running high, but it's okay. Like, you know, you took your insulin, you thought you did right, but something happened, you know, whatever. Like, it's okay, you'll get them next time. She's like, no, it just says, hi, you did something wrong. You're bad, you're a bad diabetic. And I was like, oh my God, that's so true. Like, what? So yes, I loved this, ate it up. Okay, if you have gotten this far into the video, leave the blood drop emoji, one, because that is what I put next to any of my medical contacts in my phone, like my pharmacy, my doctor, like all of that, I put the little blood drop emoji. Now that I say that, I don't know why. Oh, oh, it was because I was pricking my fingers at the time when I did that. So leave that if you've gotten this far into the video. If you have, thanks for sticking with me throughout this entire thing. I hope that there is something you might have learned, especially if you have someone in your life that you love that has diabetes. Just know that you're never going to understand. You're never going to get it unless you have it. But trying to get it and trying to understand means absolutely the world to us. It really does. Like when people do research and they're like, okay, so I looked up that like this affects like this or like that, you know, this is more complex carbs. I'm like, I'm passing away. Uh, so yes, um, I really appreciate y'all. If you want to follow my Patreon, we've had a really crazy time recently. Like what went down with my job? We don't talk about it here on YouTube. So please patrons do not put it in the comments, but good God. Anyway, thank you all for watching. If you want to follow me on Goodreads and Instagram, they are going to be linked down below as well as merch that I recently put out, which I'm so excited about. It looks so freaking cute. Um, anyway, I am going to, What's my outro? I hope you're all having an amazing day, evening, night, dusk, dawn, whatever it is you're having in whatever part of the world you are currently having it in. And I will see you in a video coming very soon. Bye. You could try to play, but you're never gonna beat me. Look the other way, what I'm doing ain't easy. Bloody hands stain from the people who deceive me. Bloody hands break through the chains, go free me. Looking for change, looking for pain. Pulling a mob, pushing a train. I'll never stop, stick to a lane. Pick up the pieces and go rearrange. Uh, I'll be the best above all.